All right, guys, so I'm coming at you from Washington, D.C. I am here for the rally, so <laughs> forgive me for my video not being as professional as it usually is, but hey, I'm trying to work with a setup. Now, this video, um, I want to get out to you guys because um, I just finished watching the coverage on the Georgia Senate race, and um, it's not looking good. So, you know, I just want to make this video to get my initial reaction to it again. These are my initial thoughts. So I am going to be coming at you guys from a more two dimensional, just straight political analysis standpoint. Um, just assuming that everything was legit. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm just going to assume everything was legit and went right with this election for the purposes of this video. So my initial reaction is that I am very disappointed because it looks like Raphael Warnock is going to pull out over Kelly Loeffler. I mean, it's like 12 a.m. right now. I think it's statistically impossible at this point for her to come back. And it also looks like John Ossoff is going to uh, be victorious over David Perdue. Um, and he's just taking the lead. And there's a lot more votes to come out of DeKalb County and Atlanta and Fulton and that area. And that's a Democrat uh, stronghold. So it looks like he's going to take the victory there. So basically at this point guys like i'm extremely 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 disappointed um right now and the reason why guys is because raphael warnock and john ossoff were not strong democratic candidates they were very 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 beatable and i really do think it's embarrassing that kelly loffler and david purdue um lost to them um again assume everything was legit i think it's a shame you would think there would be a clear rejection of the Democrat narrative. But I think the problem is, is that, you know, being somebody that actually keeps up with politics, I really don't know what Kelly Loeffler is actually for. I just don't. I know what she's against. I know she's against socialism. I know she's against radical liberal Raphael Warnock. I know that she's uh, not for abortion. But outside of that, I mean, you know, most of her whole campaign was her talking about how bad Democrats are. And it's almost like she forgot to mention, like, okay, what are you good at? What have you done? What are you for, right? Don't just tell me what you're against. Tell me what you're for. And I really do think that that type of rhetoric hurt her because you're not really giving people reasons to vote for you. You're just trying to give people reasons to vote against somebody else. And that's not a line of attack that I think that uh, Republicans are going to be able to use uh, much longer. And the reason why is because of somebody like President Trump who came along, and you guys remember, when Trump ran, what was he for? He was for the walls. He was for fair trade, not free trade. He was for bringing jobs back. Right? He was for infrastructure. He was for the $2,000 checks. Right? We know clearly what President Trump is for. And I think that's what truly differentiates him from all these other Republican candidates. Because there are times where Trump will come out and he'll say something that both sides agree with, that are very popular on both sides. There's a reason why, you know, the right that's separating from the establishment the GOP, there's a reason why they call them populist candidates. Because the ideas that come from people like President Trump are relatively popular. Now he says a lot of stuff people disagree with too, obviously, but you know, those $2,000 stimulus checks, that was a no-brainer. Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue not getting behind that, I think, really hurt them. And then you have Mitch McConnell, who, you know, as much as I respect him as a politician, as a strategician, he missed on this one. He missed. That's if he actually really wanted to win the Senate. <laughs> I'm not convinced at this point, considering how egregious some of his actions was, just like, you know, for example, not actually putting the, the BS bill that he had created out for a vote and at least give Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue to vote yes to President Trump's ass to make it at least seem like, you know, they was all for it. Only thing they did was they came out and half-heartedly said, okay, yeah, I'm for it at the last minute. It wasn't believable to anybody. And Mitch McConnell knows how important stimulus was to Georgia because he's the one that said it himself. He's like, the reason why we really want this stimulus the $600 is because Georgians have told us that that's important and it's hurting Kelly Loughlin and David Perdue. That was the whole point. 
So Mitch McConnell dropping the ball on stimulus is really a miscalculation if he actually wanted to win the Senate. Now, what does that mean for the Senate? I mean, it means that McConnell most likely is going to have to give up some of his power. But guys, it's not the end of the world. It's just, you know, a 50-50 uh, majority for the Democrats with Kamala Harris, again, if she takes office. Tie-breaking. Okay? So the Republicans still are going to have a large say in terms of what gets passed and what doesn't get passed. They're still going to have to get Republicans on board, especially for things that are, you know, more murkier, right? That are bipartisan, but bipartisan in certain factions for certain bills that require 60 votes. You know, for things that require a simple majority, who knows? Democrats will have a definitely advantage there because Kamala will be the tiebreaker if it's 50-50 among party lines. But... You know, it's, it's not the end of the world, even though, again, the Democrats do gain a lot more power in the Senate than they would have had. So it remains to be seen what Mitch McConnell's role is going to be. But I don't expect him to lose too much influence. I really don't. So at the end of the day, I do think it's bad that they lost. Um, but it's not necessarily the end of the world because McConnell is so good at the strategy part of politics, but he, he dropped the ball on this, right? There, there's no other way for me to square. It. Now, you know, with David Perdue, I basically can say the same thing I said about Kelly Loeffler. I mean, what do we know about him? You know, he was a business guy. I think he was a CEO of like Dollar General or something like that. What was he for? I know he's against. I know he's against socialism, right? I know he's against you know, abortion on demand. I know he's against gun control. I know he's against that. But I want to know what is he for? And again, paying attention to these guys and listening to these guys is, you know, I think the Republican rhetoric of always being against something because you're against the Democrats. I'm just against the Democrats. Campaigning on that, it's not going to work anymore. Pay attention to the migration patterns. I've been trying to point it out to you guys. I mean, look at the migration patterns. You got people coming from New York, to Atlanta, to a red state, right now, look at the election. Like, the only places Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff really won in is the big cities. And they won by a large margin. So the Republican Party is going to have to start trying to appeal to some of those people in the cities if they actually want to cut into this large Democrat like migration that's coming down here. And I don't think it's going to take a radical change as much as it's just adopting kind of approach that President Trump has on certain things where, you know, he'll say stuff that the left and the right can agree with. And again, evidence by the $2,000 stimulus checks, he had, what, 90% of the country behind him on that? That was as bipartisan as it gets. So the Republicans really got to start picking up on some of the things that President Trump does and really start to take those things to heart and try to change the strategy a little bit, right? Run some candidates that's gonna bring some excitement. You know, run some of these young guys, these young people out here that, you know, are excited, that, you know, want to be involved in politics. You know, a lot of young freshmen coming in to the house, you know, people like Josh Hawley, you know, I keep bringing him up, but, you know, he represents the image of the GOP. I think it needs to go in. Right. I really do. Um, I think that he's the front runner right now. And I think he's the mold that everybody needs to try to emulate. Josh Hawley was not afraid to speak up for what the people want, even if he had to work across the aisle with somebody of a completely different ideology. He was willing to do that. That's leadership. And he was the first senator to object to the Electoral College votes. Those are the type of candidates the GOP got to start running. You know, we got to start running people like that. People that have ideas that are not scared to say, you know what, I have an idea. I'm for something. That's what a GOP has to do. So, again, disappointing. If it holds, who knows? It could change. I mean, like I said, I'm recording this at like, what, 1230 now? So it can change by the time you guys see it. But I'll be at the rally tomorrow. Hopefully I'll have some extra footage for you guys. But I just want to get this out as my reaction. Initial reaction, you know, having... You know really thought it out as much as i usually do for my videos so again i apologize if i'm kind of all over the place but those are my initial thoughts on the senate race so let me know what you guys think make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective peace